Hello out there on Facebook. This is Stephen Smith from Inside Out Studio coming to you with Live Art Mini. It is Wednesday at 1 o'clock and then we are continuing with colored pencils this week. So if you joined us last week, we started exploring some colored pencil techniques in an abstract way, something simple that you can do to create some realistic looking things happening. I'm pulling up a picture right now of our example from last week. So as you can see, we created this 3D effect. Let me take my name now, because that's not Steven, that's a drawing. So we created a 3D effect to make things look like they're going back in space by using our colored pencils. You can see with this, you're pressing really hard around the edges of those shapes, of those lines going backwards, and then fading out to white at the center of each section to make it look like lights hitting it. Another example of that is right here. So basically you're using intense color intensity and the pressure of your colored pencil to create that three dimensional effect and look like it's kind of distorted and then fading to light on your paper there. So if you would like to check out that video, if you did not see us last week here at Live Art Mini, you can always check out our YouTube page where we upload all those videos. You can check them out at any time. And you know, all those different videos have different techniques, different skill levels. I was just talking to someone earlier today about Everyone can take a little bit of something away from it. Like today, we're gonna to be looking at some realistic techniques. It might not be everyone's choice, but check it out. Give it a try, give it a watch. We're trying to do some things that make some quick, easy art lessons and uh, art projects for you at home. Something to do while you still might be in quarantining or while you're just kind of hanging out and enjoying yourselves with your family. I hear that Jody Mann is out there watching. Jody, I hope you've got your colored pencils and are ready to do some coloring with us today. Uh, we actually had Dwayne Sparks stop by earlier with his mom. So having said that, our retail store is open now. So our hours are 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, as well as 10 to 2 on Saturday. So you can come check out the store and all the awesome artwork that our artists have made. And then uh, we also had to remodel the store. We've never got to formally announce it but we got a couple of colors on the wall. We've got some new fixtures in the store. We also have, if you haven't heard, we have a new marketing and finance person. That's Kim Neal Davis. You can come in and meet her. Uh, we do have some uh, recommendations for if you're coming. We have some masks. If you don't happen to have a mask at home, we are requesting that you use one when you do come to the store. And also we have some spots on the floor. That way everyone can be distanced out safely. But definitely come and check us out. We're at 140 High Street in downtown Hamilton. And like I said, you can check out all the amazing work that our artists have been doing. And then I'm gonna make a quick announcement at the end of the show about what our artists opening up and the studio opening back up again. I can't say exactly what date that's gonna be, but it is gonna be happening soon. So before we get started today, I wanna give a big shout out, thank you to LCNB. They are our colored pencil workshop sponsors. So thank you LCNB Bank, they have a a spot on the west side of Hamilton, as well as other spots around Butler County for all of your banking needs. So let's get to it. So last week I asked you to prep for this week by Googling landscape coloring page. So you could go on Google, you could do this at any time after you watch this show, or you could do it right now if you'd like, if you've got a little quick printer handy. But look for a coloring page via Google, you'll get something like this, where it's just a simple black and white outline. So what we're doing is we're taking all the drawing part out of it. We're just gonna focus on color and colored pencil techniques. So we don't even have to worry about drawing a realistic landscape or skill level in that way. We're just gonna be using some techniques right on a blank coloring page. And I'm gonna be demonstrating on this one today. This is one I found, kind of reminds me of uh, Claude Monet's Japanese Bridge. If you're familiar with Monet and his water lilies, this is kind of similar to that. So we also will be looking at Jason's bronze artwork again. Jason is our resident colored pencil artist here at Inside Out. So I pulled a new one out. This is actually what Jason was working on right before we shut down for Corona. So this is a picture of Conan. So this was taken from the movie starring Jason Momoa. I want to say back in 2010, 2012. I'm probably wrong about that date. But Jason brought in a DVD and we found a picture online. And you can see here, he is very, very skilled with the colored pencil, photorealistic almost. So a big shout out to Jason. If you and your mom are watching today, can't wait to see you back here in the studio soon. 
So let's jump over to the example cam. There we go. So I've got my coloring page ready to go right here. A few different techniques we're going to be building on what we had last week in terms of using some pressure to create some depth with your color pencil is where in terms of color intensity. And we're also going to be using warms and cools. So as I pull my colored pencils out, I'm going to be separating them into a few different piles. So I'm going to take all the warm colors, which are your reds, oranges, and yellows. I'm going to separate those. Now you also have violets and greens, which can have a warm version. So like this green right here, kind of like a nice lime green, that's a warmer tone. It feels warmer when you look at it. And then your cools are the violets and the blues, some of the greens as well. And I've got neutrals, blacks and whites. I'm going to be using some earth tones as well, some greens and browns. So basically we've got some color grouping where I consider these the warm colors neutrals in the middle, and then your cool colors. So if you remember one little thing from last week is that cool colors recede. They go farther away visually and warm colors come up and grab your attention. So we're going to take that into account when we start into three-dimensional realistic color pencil techniques. So let me just get this centered right here. One thing I am going to do is pull out a cool tone because I'm going to start with the background. One technique to do when you're doing realistic work is work from the back to the front. So the sky and the mountains coming up to the bridge, coming up to the river, and to the stones up front there. Let me get the sharpener out here. Exciting sharpening work for everyone at home. So what I'm going to start to do is just a thin layer of blue all across the background. So those of you that have learned to stay in your lines, let's go ahead and forget about that. We're just going to start to lightly layer blue across the whole background. And what this is doing is it's setting up an, what we call an underlying tone. So it's a cool tone to make things look like they're going to be disappearing farther away. And I'm also going to take gray as well and go over top of that. So one thing to get more depth and interest for your color pencil work is to layer your colors. And if you notice, I'm sticking to one direction with this blue. And then when I switch to another color, which is going to be the gray. I'm going to change the direction that I'm coloring. Let's go up and down this time. Because as you change the direction, you think about the surface of the paper, the paper isn't 100% flat. There's all these bumps and texture to it that are kind of really subtle and really small, things that you can't really see with the human eye. But if you got a microscope and really looked at the surface of the paper, it'd be kind of hilly and bumpy. So as you change the direction that you're coloring, the colored pencil is hitting different angles and surfaces of the texture of the paper. So that's why you can see different colors popping up from different angles. So you're going to be thinking like, what are you doing? Are you making a cloudy day? Is it dull? What's going on? I am going to add some greens to the mountain to make it look like it's covered with trees. But what I'm doing first is since it's the farthest thing away is I'm adding a blue gray tone to it because that's going to dull it down. It's also going to give it a cool tone and it's going to make it fall back in space visually. So the thing about it is if you're driving, if you've ever been down through the Smoky Mountains, going down to Gatlinburg, as you're driving down south in Tennessee, you can start to see the mountains coming out of the clouds and they're just kind of this dull bluish gray. That's because there's a lot of atmosphere between you and those mountains at that point. So all that atmosphere in the sky, tends to make things look very dull and have that bluish tone to it. So now I'm adding some green in here. And just some variation. I'm going to change up my greens for this other mountain next to it. So this is going to be a darker green sitting a little bit farther away. 
Like I said, everything's going to be look, looking really subtle right now because it's the farthest, it's the dullest, so it has this blue-gray tone to it. I am going to give a hint of one other technique we're going to look at, and it's just the contrast. As things move into shadows, you're going to have a little bit of a darker color to it. So let's pull in some darker greens down here too. And then you're going to create a rhythm in your picture of moving from light to dark. And as you start to layer a light next to a dark, next to a light, next to a dark, that starts to create space and depth as well. So at the base of the mountain here, getting a little table shake, just pressing really hard here. So at the base of the mountain, I'm going to make it a little bit darker, top of the mountain a little bit lighter because the sun's hitting it, it's closer to the sky. Next mountain over is a little bit darker at the base in the shadow gets lighter as it moves to the top as it's getting that light. So that repetition of dark to light to dark to light is also going to create that space as it goes into the background. All right, so now let's add some contrast to that. So how do the greens up front look in comparison to the greens in the back? So we're going to press harder to get more intense color. And we're going to also start to add some light. So as we talked about, the other green has a warmer color to it, this lime green. We're going to add more of this into the greens up front, as well as start to layer in some yellows. Get crazy, throw some peach in there, maybe some orange too. So as you're laying, layering the colors, you want to add some variety to it. That way it's not just that same flat green the whole time. So what we're looking to do is get away from flatness. So I'm going to take a look at this tree over here. That's going to be my next green because it's directly next to that green mountain because I want to show you that contrast of the warm versus the cool green. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get really playful with it. I'm just going to start adding yellows here and there. What's good about trying to do some realistic colored pencil techniques is you want some variety. You don't want just one single flat green. You want to layer it up. so. It doesn't really matter where that yellow goes. It might be a little bit here, might be a lot of it right there. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get some peach in there. Peach, peach, peach. And like I said, this is the first color because it's going to be the underlying tone. So it's just going to set me up to make a warm green. Even though you're looking at peach and yellow right now, as we start to layer the greens over top, it's going to sit underneath the green eye color over it just to add a subtle warmness to it. So I'm going to push really hard around those edges to make it pop against that blue-gray mountain in the background. I can feel the table shaking. You have to press a little bit harder now that we've got some more intense color. So hopefully you're not getting any seasickness at home if that camera is shaking as well. So if you can see it, if I can see it right in front of me, I'm getting a bright, really intense green, but then I can also see little pockets of yellow and peach sticking through there as well. And then the set I have is a 24 color set, color set from Prang. It's got three different greens. So I'm also going to change the type of green that I'm using. I'm going to switch to uh, Kelly Green right here. You don't have to be named Kelly to use Kelly Green. It's the first official dad joke of the day. So just pushing down really hard, getting that bold, intense color, and hopefully you can see at home, in contrast to that green mountain, the mountain's starting to look blue now from the underlying blue that we put in there. So I might want to go back and add a little bit more green to make it. So it's like a back and forth play there, have some fun while you're coloring. Like I said, add some variation. You've got your underlying warm colors now to really make that tree pop up to the surface 
and then layering your green so it's not just one single green to add some depth and dimension. So I'm going to pause right there. So we've gone over a few techniques. First of all, is that you want your blue-gray in the back to make things look like they're farther away. And then second, you've got the layering of warm colors underneath the color that you're using. So you got yellow and peach underneath your green to make it come forward and to really pop out against that background. So that's what we got so far. I'm going to show you a couple more on the other side of this commercial from LCNB. Like I said, we want to thank them for being our sponsor. So if you'll take 30 seconds to hear what they have to say, that'd be much appreciated. This isn't our first stand against adversity. It's probably not yours either. Those challenges taught us a few lessons. Keep things simple, help where you can, and none of us can do it alone. At LCNB, we're here to talk, to find solutions together, and rise to the occasion. We will get through this together, because we know a brighter day is emerging. Today, tomorrow, LCNB National Bank is here for you. Member FDIC. Thank you for LCMB. And then thank you for taking 30 seconds out of your day to watch that as well. I'm gonna introduce you again to our friend Jason Braun, who is our artist here at Inside Out Studio, that has done these two amazing colored pencil pieces behind me. So this is Jason right here. If you missed last week's show, I'm gonna go through a few of his artworks. He used to be a heavy metal guitarist. So he loves to draw his heavy metal idols and rock star idols. So we've got Freddie Mercury from Queen. We've got Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. And we've got the cover of The Division Bell from Pink Floyd for all you classic rock fans. So Jason not only loves his hard rock and heavy metal, but he also loves getting commissions. So like I hinted at, we're gonna be starting up the studio soon. So if you have any portraits, uh, Jason's done pet portraits as well. So if you'd like something done of your cat or dog in colored pencil, a commission, that Jason could do, please contact the studio, uh, send us a message here on Facebook or give us a call since we are open again for our retail store. Uh, Jason's probably going to be joining us in a few weeks and he's looking for some work to do and a paycheck coming up. So commission, send our way something realistic out of pencils for Jason. We're going to bring you back to the detail cam now and go over a few more techniques for colored pencils. So I'm going to jump down to the tree trunk pull in the different color sets. We've got the browns here. I'll refer to the color of actual things as the local color. So we say a tree trunk is generally brown. Leaves in the summer are green. So we've got what's called local color and then we've got the underlying color. And we've talked about how when things are up close right here, they have a more of a warm tone to it to make it pop. So as I'm starting to do this tree trunk, I don't want to go straight for the brown. I'm going to put an underlying yellow tone to it and like we were saying before with doing the sections of leaves you don't have to do it all over it can be spots here and there just to add some variation i'm going to take some orange in here as well and these underlying tones you want to put in with a very very light touch so you don't want to press too hard you don't want to cover up the page and fill in the paper all the way you just want to leave it open for another color to come over top. So we've got spots of orange, spots of yellow. I'm going to start in with a brown right over top of that. And this time I'm pressing a little bit harder with this local color. So you get the most coverage with your brown with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange showing up here and there. And then as I move to this side of the tree, I'm going to switch to a darker brown. And then for this more realistic style, I'm not going to try to color in a flat, even tone. I'm going to leave some marks here and there. And then that's going to create the illusion of some bark and add some texture to the tree. So as we work on this tree trunk, the next technique I'm going to introduce is contrast. So contrast, you might have recognized as a word you would see on your TV in terms of changing the picture setting. So contrast refers to the lightness compared to the darkness. So if you have higher contrast, that means your brights are brighter and your darks are darker. 
If you have lower contrast, they tend to lean towards a middle gray tone, so you don't have such extreme lights and darks. So, taking that into account for depth, things that are closer to us are going to have more contrast. Your brights are brighter, your darks are darker. As things move farther away, they're duller and hard to see, so you have lower contrast. So that's the reason for all this gray in the background here. So, things that I do up close, I want some deep darks and I want some bright lights. So I'm going to leave this kind of light yellow and brown on this side. And as I move to the left side of the tree, I'm going to start adding some darker darks. And then playing with our warms and cools, I can go right back to the cool tones for a shadow. Now, that's going to be your color of choice if you want some blues or you want some violets. I'm going to go for a nice cool violet. and create the illusion of a shadow on this side of the tree. We mentioned Monet and his water lilies and the Japanese bridge and the gardens that he used to paint all the time. One thing that he would do as an impressionist painter would be to increase the warms and cools to make them more extreme. So you'll often find some really intense blues and purples in the shadows of some impressionist paintings. So now that I'm getting some cool violets onto the left side of that tree, I can even create a little shadow coming onto the ground over here as well. Add some more realism. So you can see this now has the higher contrast, the darker dark, the lighter light to really make it pop up compared to this really, really dull mountain in the background. So I'm going to keep coming up towards the front now and then do some demonstrations on these rocks. So playing with color, everyone knows that rocks tend to be gray. Gray is a very dull color. To, so to spice it up, we're going to just come in with some hints of other colors underneath the gray that you're going to be using. And what's fun about gray is it's a neutral color. That means you can pretty much add whatever you want underneath it. So I may take a light brown like this. I might take a violet. Heck, let's do a pink too. So all these rocks are a lot of different colors underneath. Let's try a yellow. You're just having fun, pick them whatever colors you like, knowing that the next step is gonna be adding a gray over top of it to be the dominant color, whereas this is the underlying color. So I'm gonna take a gray right over top now. And then just for some variety on top of that, you can color lightly on some of the rocks, you can color darker on the other rocks, just to add some variation to those rocks in the river. So as you're working on your coloring pages, I know that adult coloring books have become popular as of like seven, eight years ago. So you can add some realism to these images that are already laid out for you. The image I did at home as practice was on a, a Bob Ross coloring book that I got for Christmas or a birthday. So that's fun. I hear from up front that Rebecca Reed is watching. So hello, Rebecca. Rebecca just stopped in this past week too. She dropped off some work that she did at home. She's got some awesome uh, cards that you could use for birthdays, saying hello, thank you cards as well as hand decorated bags that she's been doing at home. So if you're coming to the store to make a purchase, if you want to get a little something something, you could also get a Rebecca Reed original handmade bag or card to go with that. All right, you might be bored of me uh, coloring on some rocks here. I hear David Campbell's also out there watching. Hello, David. I hope you're doing some art at home. I know your staff's really good about getting you art materials and doing some work with you. So now I'm going to add some light and shadow to the rocks here. So just to keep it consistent, I've got the shadow on the left side of the tree. I want the shadows to be on the left side of the rock as well. I'm going to add a deep blue for the shadow here. And 
pressing a little bit harder, getting a darker tone. And letting it be lighter on the right side. So I'm going to go for some extreme shading. Go ahead and pull out the black colored pencil and get really, really dark. So remember we said as things get closer to you, going farther down the page, they need more contrast. So darker darks, lighter lights. And then since this is in a river, one thing I could have been doing is adding some of those colors right underneath it. Because as you know, images are reflected upside down on the water. So just for example, I'll take, I've got some purple in this rock here. The mirror image of this rock might look something like that. Some purple on that side, some gray here. some shadow right underneath where the shadow on the actual rock is and then I would fill that in with some really bright blue and when I color in water what I like to do whether it's doing something like this as a coloring page or doing a painting myself I like to color streaky from right to left leaving some areas of white showing to be the light of the sky reflected off the water and just the same way I treated the reflection as well. So I colored kind of streaky right to left using the same colors that were in that rock. And this is addictive. I forget that we're streaming now. At this point, I'm getting lost in the coloring. So have some fun with it, enjoy yourself. Alright, at this point I'm going to switch to one I was working on at home, it's more put together, and then I'll review some of the techniques that we were going through as I show you that. So here's one from that Bob Ross coloring book that I did at home. So we'll take it from the top of what we've been talking about today. As I started off that picture, we've got a little focus issue right there, here we go. So as I started off this picture, I started in the background and just laid down a subtle tone of blue and gray going to hold it up here for you to see if you can see that. So there's blue and gray covering the mountain and then green over top to get some uh, trees covering on there. And then there's some slight contrast on the mountain itself. So even though the one side's in light, one side's in dark, I don't want to go completely black with the shadow. I just want to go a light gray because it's farther away. I don't want so much contrast. And as I got progressively closer, coming down to these trees, and then to the water, and then to the trees up front, I kept adding more and more warm tones. So you can see in the tree bank there, the yellow is coming through. And then I've got some lights at the top, moving to a dark at the bottom, and then light on the next bank of trees, going to dark at the bottom. So that repetition of light to dark to light to dark starts to layer the space and create depth as well. And then moving over to the trees here, you can see you've got the lights on one side, the yellow and the orange on the light side. I did some subtle purple over here on this section to show where the shadow is. And then going down into the bushes up front, you've got some really, really intense greens. Adding some blues in there as well for the shadow and then adding some yellows in there as well for the light side of things. So some simple techniques that you can add. And right now you can see I was working on this section here. That tree is not blue, that's just the underlying layer to show that it's going to be in the shadows and then, like I said, layering the greens on top to make a more realistic looking colored scene there. So some quick and easy techniques that you can do at home, something you can practice over time. Get a nice coloring book of landscapes, so like I said, go on Google and just type in landscape coloring page. You've got a lot of free options there. And then my praying set of 24 costs all like five bucks. So this is a very simple investment that you can do. Uh, gives yourself a something to do at home to relax, enjoy yourself. One thing that I've learned from uh, quarantining a little bit and then having a little bit slower pace is enjoying life, taking the time for yourself. That's something that we all tend to forget. We're all stressed, 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 and work, work, work. Uh, trying to do the best we can, but it's good to take some time to yourself and just do something fun to like the, let the mind relax and zone out on some stuff and have some fun while you're doing it. So before we go today, I want to remind you that we do have that storefront open. Our hours are 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, 
and then 10 to 2 on Saturday. We're located at 140 High Street here in downtown Hamilton, Ohio. And we also still have our online store open. So as things start to open back up, you're not ready to jump into things, you don't want to wear a mask going in the store, you can still check out our online store because we have curbside pickup. If you're local to Hamilton or Butler County, we can do delivery to your door. And we also have shipping available uh, if you'd like to pay for that as well. So there's still many more options if you're not, not quite ready to get back into the thick of things. And then I also want to say thank you to the City of Hamilton and to the Greater Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. Today is 513 day, so that is our area code here in Hamilton and the Cincinnati area. So they are running a special. If you're buying local in Hamilton, you make five purchases of $13 or more. You could send in those five receipts and then be entered into win an awesome prize. I'm not 100% sure what that prize is, but check out the uh, link in our comment section for details. You can find out more about 513 Day here in Hamilton, Ohio. So thank you for all of our artists that were tuning in. We had David out there, Jody, Rebecca. We had Dwayne stop in the studio. I'm probably forgetting some people, but I'd like to tell you all out there, Inside Out Studio Artists, we will be opening soon. Like I said, I can't give you an exact date, but you should be in contact from your support coordinators or someone from Inside Out Studio. So we're going to be seeing if you're ready to come back. And then we're, our numbers are going to be a little bit smaller. We're not going to have all 16 artists per day here. We are going to keep our numbers to 10 or less, but we do want to get those doors open for you to come back, make some awesome art. We miss you. We hope to see you very, very soon. So be listening for that phone or checking here on Facebook for updates from Inside Out Studio. So thank you all for joining us again. A big thank you to LCMB, our sponsor for the Colored Pencil two-week special on Live Art Mini. So join us next week. We're going to be here next Wednesday at 1 o'clock as always. And our theme is going to be cartoons and caricatures. So if I'm going to do an example as well. If you want a, let's say a celebrity or someone, you want to send in a picture for me to do a caricature of, I can put that on uh, as an example for next week's show. Because i got to get some things prepped. i got to get my hands warmed up, get my lines warmed up to give you a quick little lesson on cartoons and caricatures next week here, Wednesday at 1 o'clock. So from Inside Out Studio, this is Stephen Smith saying see you next week. Bye-bye.